Hello YouTubers, Jim from Ohio here, and I'd like to give everybody a real quick tour of our yard. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of flower beds in the front of our house, and most of this comes from my wife being uh, a person who worked in a nursery and greenhouses when she was younger in life, and so this is kind of spread to our yard. Uh, we've got all kinds of flowers, all kinds of shrubs, all kinds of bushes. Uh, we both like rocks and uh, hardscape. Uh, so we've got things like, uh, I guess you'd call that a rock river or something like that. Uh, but you can see we've got a lot of plants, a lot of uh, upkeep that goes on in our, in our yard. Uh, just the amount of work that we do starting in springtime, uh, through the summer. It's kind of overwhelming from time to time. Uh, over there we've got our pumpkins and our grapevines. And our pumpkins are a little bit wilted today. They uh, they did get watered this morning, but uh, the sun is out. It's pretty high in the sky and it's over 90 degrees today. Uh, over on that end of the yard we've got a couple of apple trees and We've got some uh, pear trees over on the other side of the yard, uh, but uh, moving down the side of the house and into the backyard, you can see over here, this is where we've got our raised bed. And uh, for those of you who have been following my channel for quite a while, uh, you'll know that was one of the first videos that I did when we put that raised bed in. But then moving into the backyard, you can see we've got more uh, flowers and shrubs and bamboo and just all kinds of activity in addition to the uh, birdhouses and the uh, chicken coop there. Um, but uh, uh, over on that end of the yard, that's where we've got our uh, main garden where we grow a lot of the uh, vegetables and uh, most of the food that we're able to produce here on our own property. And back here a couple more apple trees. Uh, but uh, you can see we've got quite a bit going on and to keep up with all of this uh, Let me tell you the big secret uh, For keeping up with all of this and trying to keep it all healthy now. You'll notice in the yard here um, You'll see a lot of uh, broad leaves and maybe you'll see some clover I don't know how well that's coming out in a video, but we do use uh, organic gardening practices in our yard. We don't use any sprays. We don't use any herbicides or pesticides. Uh, if you look close in the raised bed over there, you may see a little bit of powder on some of the collard greens. Uh, collards are those uh, plants that do tend to get uh, a lot of the worms, the army worms or the uh, those uh, white butterflies that fly around. And so we put diatomaceous earth which is a uh, natural organic material and uh, we use that on some of our plants but other than that no sprays or no pesticides so uh, when we get back to this part of our yard uh, this is our compost pile and uh, we've had this compost pile going on for uh, as long as we've lived in the house and as a matter of fact, this was a compost pile that the people that lived in our house years before we moved into the house. And uh, we do keep this going on uh, all year round. Uh, all of our yard scraps, our garden scraps, our kitchen scraps, all of that goes here. And uh, right here is the place that I've been digging out most recently. And this right here, this is black gold. This is that organic stuff that we really use a lot of. And this right here is a secret to uh, all of our gardening, whether it be all of our uh, plants that we've got in our flower beds or all of our shrubs. And anytime we put a uh, plant into our garden, uh, we usually uh, put some of this stuff down into the hole. Now, uh, there are times that we just don't have enough compost because it it's something that is uh, it takes a long time to make uh, even though we keep this going all year round obviously the temperature the amount of moisture and humidity comes into play 
and uh, there's just not enough of this stuff to go around so if you don't have a large amount of compost uh, you can buy compost too uh, we do pick up some compost from uh, a local store here uh, that actually they uh, gather up all of the animal waste from our local zoo in uh, Columbus Ohio and uh, it's uh, composted down and they call it zoo brew and so when we're not able to have enough of this stuff we do turn to the zoo brew and uh, that works wonders too but the purpose of this video today that I'm putting together is to show something that everybody can do to make this stuff go about a hundred times further than it would go if you're to use it in this raw organic uh, compost form. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go and I'll show you kind of a little bit of a secret to what I use to keep our yard up and growing as good as it does. The secret to making your compost go a hundred times farther is by brewing it into a simple compost tea. Uh, I'm going to show you how to real quickly put together a compost tea brewing system. It's something anybody can do and if you're not using compost tea in your garden yet, this is something you should start doing immediately, especially if you're into organic gardening. It's very simple. You don't need that many pieces or parts to put one together. The first thing that you'll need is a five gallon bucket. And uh, along with the bucket, you will want to go ahead and buy the lid too. You'll see why in just a moment. But to prepare your bucket, all you have to do is drill two small holes uh, right under this band or the lip that goes around the bucket. Just two small holes right there. Uh, for your lid, you're going to go ahead and drill a hole right in the middle of the lid. And then you're going to uh, attach a rope. Uh, just put it through that hole so that it'll pull up and down from either the inside of the bucket or the outside. And I do put a knot on both ends of the rope uh, so that it doesn't pull all the way through from either direction. In addition to the bucket, uh, you're going to need a paint strainer bag. And uh, I believe this is just a gallon paint strainer bag, but you can get a two gallon paint strainer bag or you can get a five gallon paint strainer bag from any home improvement store. Um, along with that, you're going to need an air pump that you can pick up at any uh, pet supply store. These are normally used for aquariums. And along with that, you're going to want to get whatever tube fits that. Now it is important when you get your aquarium pump that you get one that has two outputs. And we'll go over why you need that in just a moment. In addition to this flexible line, you're going to need a couple of these things right here. These are check valves. Uh, these simply allow the air to pass in one direction and they don't, it do, they don't allow any air to come back the other way. And the reason you want these to be installed, while they're not totally mandatory, this may help save your pump. Sometimes when you're brewing the tea, uh, water or fluids can come back down this tube and these simply keep the water from coming back down the tube and getting into your pump and causing your pump to go bad. So uh, any air pump that has two air outputs uh, will work just fine. In addition to that, you're going to want to get two large air stones. These normally sit in the bottom of an aquarium and just make bubbles come up uh, when they're hooked up to the air pump. And then you'll need uh, some uh, nylon tubing to go along with that. Normally, if you just buy about a 15 or 20 foot roll of this tubing, that'll give you plenty to do anything you want to do with. Uh, and then you're going to need a couple of these. This is just a T valve that are also sold in any fish supply store. It allows you to simply split off and have two of these air stones on one line coming off of this pump. In addition to the large air stones, you're also going to want to get two of these smaller air stones along with another uh, T-valve and uh, some more of your nylon here. And I'll post a link down below in this video where you can pick some of this stuff up if you want to go to Amazon and pick it up instead of picking up at your local uh, fish supply store. Uh, 
Uh, I like also using a little bit larger tub and uh, this is large enough for me to set my five gallon bucket in. And the reason for that, sometimes you may accidentally overflow the tea from the bucket once it starts brewing and some bubbles start forming. Uh, and this will just keep you from either messing up your deck or uh, sometimes I brew the tea inside of my sunroom uh, just to keep things out of the sun to keep the temperature of the water down. Uh, so this is just an overflow bucket. Uh, and then uh, to make the, to actually brew the tea, there are a couple things you need as well. You're going to need some uh, black strap molasses. You can find this in just about any well-equipped grocery store. Now when you buy your molasses, you want to make sure that you get unsulfured molasses. You don't want anything that has sulfur in it because that will kill the beneficial bacteria that we're going to create in this brewing process. So just pick up a jar or two of those. I usually pick up a couple of them at a time. That way it'll get me through the whole growing season. We only need to use a couple tablespoons of this at a time, so it will go a long way. Um, I also like to have a small dowel rod, and uh, when we start the brewing process, I'll show you what this is for. It can be any size dowel rods, uh, nothing in particular. We're just going to use that to rope the wrap, uh, to wrap the rope around a couple times. Get a little tongue tied there. Uh, in addition to this, you are going to need some compost. That's what our straining bag is for. It's going to be this is going to be our tea bag. We're going to put some compost in this, and uh, we're going to immerse it into uh, some water that we prepare. And uh, in addition to uh, the compost that you're going to put into this, I sometimes like adding some worm castings. You can pick up worm castings at any uh, good nursery or plant supply store. Uh, maybe you have a worm farmer near you, you can pick them up for free there. But I like adding a couple handfuls in just to kind of kick up the nutrition level in this stuff that we're going to brew. Uh, that's really all that you need to get started. So let's let's go ahead and start uh, putting things together. So the first thing that you're going to need, as I mentioned, is uh, take your five-gallon bucket, and uh, as I mentioned, you do have to have the two holes uh, below the rim of the bucket. And uh, the first thing that we're going to start out with is we're going to uh, fill this up with water. And we want to come uh, to within about, I wouldn't come uh, closer than two inches to those holes that you drilled. And when you get your water, you are going to want to use unchlorinated water. Don't use any water from your tap if you're on a local city uh, water system that chlorinates our water. We're on a well here, so uh, we are going to go ahead and use well water for that. If you don't have uh, well water available, uh, rain water, uh, sometimes I'll capture rain uh, in our rain barrels and use it for this purpose. Uh, otherwise, if you go to the store, you can also pick up reverse osmosis water works fine, spring water works fine. Just don't get anything that has chlorine in it. So let me go fill this bucket up and we'll go ahead to the next step. Okay, so now that we've got our water, and uh, I'm not sure if you can see it from that cam the camera angle, but we're a couple inches below the, to the two holes that we had drilled in the bucket. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add our black strap molasses. Now, as we do this, uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about why compost tea works so well. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there just never seems to be enough compost to go around. It takes a long time to make, and unless you can really make a huge amount of it or, or continuously buy it from your local nursery, uh, this is the way to make it go as far as you can possibly make compost go. And uh, what works so well about compost is the beneficial bacteria and the microbes that are formed through the creation of that compost. Uh, that's the stuff that feeds the soil. That's the stuff that the worms like. You get the beneficial bacteria, the nematodes in the soil, and all of that makes your plants just thrive. Uh, it helps your plants uh, create a great immune system so they're more resistant to diseases and pests. And uh, so what we want to do to our compost, 
or our compost tea to emulate that environment that was created in that compost pile is we're going to create a breeding ground for that beneficial bacteria and uh, we're going to cause that bacteria to multiply into billions and billions of more bacteria and uh, then we're going to use that as a topical spray to spray onto our plants and what the molasses is going to do is it's going to create the food for that bacteria uh, without this as that bacteria reproduces it's not going to have anything to eat if we don't add this and it'll start to consume itself and over time it'll it'll deplete itself of all of the energy so molasses is what we want to use so we're going to simply take a couple uh, good tablespoons of this black strap molasses and this is real thick stuff you don't want to get it on yourself or anything else uh, because it is pretty sticky stuff and molasses is actually the byproduct of when they uh, make white sugar uh, and uh, uh, it's so being a byproduct it's something that would normally go to waste uh, but I know some people like this on pancakes I really don't like this stuff uh, but the bacteria loves it so we're gonna put that in the water and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and because this is really thick heavy gooey stuff it's gonna stick to the spoon it's gonna stick to the sides of the bucket it's gonna stick to everything it comes in contact with so at this point what we want to do is just kind of get it mixed in and dispersed throughout the water so it's not one big massive uh, lump on the bottom of the bucket uh, if you're coming in contact with it uh, on your hands since your hands are wet it's not going to stick to you so much you see my hands are pretty much clean a uh, little bit of that stuff just the goo from the bottom of the bucket but uh, once we start getting that mixed in with the water you can see the water takes on that uh, dark brown color the same color uh, that molasses so once we've got that mixed in really well in the water, uh, we're ready for the next step. And the next step is to get our uh, tea bag, our brew bag, and we're going to take some of the compost that we have. And like I said, if you don't have a compost pile, it's perfectly okay to pick up some compost from your local nursery uh, or anywhere that you can get it. Uh, we're just going to take some of that compost and we're going to dump it down into the tea bag. Uh, this is probably the hardest part of the whole process right here, just trying to get it into the bag with, without making a huge mess. And uh, the compost that I'm putting in there is straight from our compost pile. It's pretty broken down, but uh, you may see that I've got some larger chunks or some sticks or some twigs, and, and that's okay. Uh, the, that's the nice thing about this process. It's, uh, it's not rocket science. Uh, there's a lot of science that goes into this, but it's not rocket science by any means. Um, in addition, I mentioned that I like to also use some worm castings. So uh, I do have some worm castings here that uh, we picked up uh, from our local nursery. And uh, this is uh, just going to add some extra energy, some extra oomph or some extra punch to our tea uh, as it gets brewed. Now, the nice thing about compost tea is you can add just about anything to your tea. Uh, you can add, uh, uh, well here, let me show you some of the things that I tend to add once in a while. Uh, this is a little pouch of bat guano and uh, one of the local hydroponic stores in our area sometimes will give these out as samples uh, just to customers that come in and when they've got free samples i'll usually grab a handful of these take them home but uh, since it is bat guano and it is uh, something that's water soluble you can dump it right into your compost tea and it's just extra food for the plants that you put it on in addition to that our local nursery or hydroponic store also has bags of this. This is actually rose and flower mix, uh, but it's, it's just a normal uh, fertilizer. Uh, most of this stuff that you get is in little pouches like this that's perfect size to dump into your compost tea brewer. 
Uh, every now and then I'll go out, we've got some comfrey plants, I'll sometimes grab some comfrey leaves and uh, chop those up with a pair of scissors and drop it right down into my compost tea bucket. There's uh, so many things you can do to kick it up a notch and make it more powerful uh, for your plants and your garden. But uh, for today, all we're going to use is our worm castings and our, comp or our uh, compost. So uh, now that we've got that in the tea bag, you want to get your uh, two small air stones. Hopefully you've had a chance to put those together. And uh, what we're going to do is we want to make sure that uh, this percolates like any uh, tea brewer or coffee pot. So we're just going to take those uh, the two smaller air stones and stick it right down into the uh, compost bag. And uh, I try to get the whole... Uh, piece down in there from that uh, uh, tea fitting on. I just put the whole thing right down into the uh, tea bag and then at that point I'm just going to give the tea bag a little twist like that. Now this is where your rope comes in. So uh, as I mentioned we've got that rope going through the lid and so uh, on the inside of the lid what we're going to do now is we're going to take that piece of rope and we're going to tie off our tea bag right there. Uh, no special knots are needed. You don't have to be a Boy Scout or anything. Just tie it on there any way that it holds in place. Um, I usually do a double knot just to make sure that the tea bag doesn't uh, come off and open up uh, down in my brewer. Uh, the only thing that you want to make sure you do is don't tie that knot so tight that you're going to crimp that airline that goes down into your tea bag. Um, so once you've got that tied off and secure, go ahead and set the whole thing aside. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Uh, so what we're going to take next is our large air stone. And uh, this air stone, we're just going to sit it right down into the bottom of our brewer. And uh, this is where the two holes in the side of your brewer uh, came in. Uh, so with those two air stones sitting right down in the bottom of the brewer, we're just going to take that line and feed it right into one of those holes so it uh, comes out on the uh, back side of the bucket and I can't see the holes from this angle here. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. So now we've got the airline coming feeding to the outside of the bucket and uh, now we're going to do the same thing with our tea bag airline. We're going to go ahead and drop our tea bag into the bucket and that other hole uh, we're going to use for feeding this other airline right through. So now we have both of our airlines penetrating to the outside of the bucket. And so now we're going to take our lid and go ahead and put our lid down on the bucket. And uh, this is the reason that you have that rope uh, penetrating through the lid. We want to hang that tea bag so it's hanging into the middle. We don't want it sitting on the bottom of the bucket and uh, we don't want it out of the water at all. We want it to hang at a height that it is suspended in that uh, mixture of water and our uh, molasses. And uh, so that's where your dowel rod comes in. So we're going to take the dowel rod and simply wrap our rope on the exterior of the bucket around a couple times. And, uh, and I'll usually go ahead and tie that off just so that it doesn't uh, come loose and cause that bag to fall. Now the rope that I'm using is a cotton rope and the reason that I mention it, it doesn't matter if you use a cotton rope or not, you can really use any rope that you want to use, uh, but uh, the cotton rope that I use is, uh, a, it, it will absorb that liquid. So even though this rope is on the outside of the bucket, uh, over time as this brews, this rope will get wet on the outside of it. I tell you that, uh, that's another reason uh, for the drip bucket that you have underneath because it will act as a wick and you don't want to place this on a carpeted area or an area that you don't want to get wet. So uh, with that done, uh, we can go ahead and seal up our bucket and uh, we're ready for uh, the air pump. So at this point we take our air pump and we simply connect our two lines that penetrate from the inner side of the bucket to the outer side. We go ahead and hook that up now and we're ready to apply power to this. 
So we plug it into our power source and you should hear your air pump kick on. I'm sure you probably can't hear it from where you are there. Uh, but when you do that, uh, if you take a peek inside, and I will move the camera in just a moment so you can see some of those bubbles, uh, you should uh, be able to see bubbles coming up from both the air stones that are on the bottom of the bucket as well as uh, bubbles coming from your tea bag. Uh, so if everything's working good and you've got bubbles created an aeration to your mixture, you're all set. Go ahead and seal the bucket up and uh, set it aside. Now you normally want to let this brew anywhere from 24 to 36 hours. Once you're done brewing it, uh, you are going to want to use this mixture within the next 24 hours, preferably within the next 12 hours. You want to use it while all of those bacteria and beneficial organisms uh, that you've created, uh, while they're still alive. Over time, they're going to continue eating the molasses. They're going to use up all of that food. And once there's no more food available, they're going to start to die off. So while they're live and thriving, that's when it's the best time to use this mixture. Now to use it, you can take it and you don't have to worry about burning plants like any fertilizer. Uh, you can put it right on the roots of the plant. You can spray it right on the leaves of the plant. Uh, when it's sprayed as a, a foliant on the leaves, it'll help get rid of, it'll create a natural barrier. It'll get rid of a lot of those bugs that like to eat away on the leaves. When you put it down near the roots or the, the stalk or stem of your vegetable, it's going to get right down and penetrate right to the root area uh, where your plants uh, can most use it. Uh, what I like to do is I've got an ortho sprayer that looks like this. It's got a dial on the top and I just hook this to the end of my hose and I'll fill the uh, reservoir up with this compost tea that we've brewed up and uh, I just uh, set it on a volume or set the dial on the top. I usually like to use either three ounces per gallon or four ounces per gallon. Uh, as you're spreading it around, if you're going through it too fast, just dial it down. If you're going through it too slow, dial it up. You want to use as much of this mixture as you can through your garden. Now, the only downside to this whole bucket system that I've got here is the same problem that I have with my compost. Uh, you've seen, I, that, the reason I walked you through my yard at the start of this to show you all the plants, all the garden areas, all the vegetables, our fruit trees, uh, I try to put this stuff on everything. Unfortunately, a five gallon brewer just never seems to be enough. Uh, even if I make this stuff up weekly and I spray it around, it never seems to be enough, just like that compost. Even though we're creating that bacteria that can be broadcast, sprayed all over my yard, it's still not enough. There's never enough compost tea to go around, which is what I want to talk with you about next. Um, I don't know if you noticed when I first started making this video, but there's a box right over here to my left, a black box with a yellow lid, which is going to be the topic of my next video. So please come back and watch that next video. I'm going to show you something that it's hard to get excited about new products in the garden center. But this is something you probably won't be able to find it in your local garden center, but I'm going to show you where you can get it. I'm going to show you what it does and why I'm so excited about it. It's something that is revolutionary to any gardener. It's revolutionary to anybody who likes to grow any kind of plants, whatever they may be. Uh, it's going to be something you're going to find totally fascinating. And I hate to do a teaser video, but this video has gone a lot longer than I typically do. So I'm going to do another video. I'm going to introduce you to this new product and show you where you can get it. And I think you're going to want to get one yourself just as soon as you see it. This is Jim. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that I've shared some knowledge with you today. If you like videos like this, please give me a thumbs up. Better yet, hit that bell down below and subscribe to our videos. Uh, thank you much. Have a wonderful day. Take care.